What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. Today, join me as we dive deep into the heart of Fallout 76 and explore the intricate details of my carefully crafted camps. From strategic placements to personalized touches, get ready for an in-depth tour that showcases the resilience and creativity thriving in the post-apocalyptic world. Let's embark on this journey together where every structure tells a tale of survival and fallout. So hello everybody, I hope you are all doing well. I wanted to go over a few more points from the last video I made on how to do little uh, things and ideas that um, could open your eyes up to a bit about how I um, approach certain builds and certain techniques. But in this video, I wanna give a bit of a more in-depth um, guide on how to do a few of these things. Now, I won't be doing a full you know, camp building video in this, but I do wanna point out some of the easy things that you can do to elevate your camps. So starting off, we're actually over here at my newest camp, and if you haven't seen that video, go check it out on YouTube. Now, I've gotten a lot of complaints and, um, uh, you know, people saying that, man, the camp's too dark in the video, and, and I apologize for that, everybody. I did try to fix that, but evidently to no avail. But I wanted to show the camp here without the uh, machines and darkness, so... Here is the front, and as you can see, I've used a lot of wavy willards in a lot of different ways. Um, one for the main part of the uh, main hall within the structure. I've also used it here on the side of the structure for a hidden room, which if you haven't seen, I will show you in this video as well. And from you know merging these down to get that doorway and to merging those up to get this beautiful roof design. Props to uh, Pai Yu. He actually um, came up with uh, a, a very good video. Go check out his channel on how to do that and I will also go over it once more in this video and show you how it's done. So starting off here I wanted to show this off because I think this is obviously one of the coolest touches of the whole build. It looks like an angel. And so this was simply a statue taken with the um, this naked man, Stephen Scarberry, and it's actually his ally statue. And simply what I did was, if I pop over here into build, um, I put this statue on a conduit. And I was able to easily place the statue on top of the shrine and merge it down. And now another props to Road Kill You, who helped out with a bunch of ideas within this camp. He actually thought of this idea, and he was like, well, dude, that would be a crazy idea. And as you can see, it turned out wonderfully. I love how it looks, and it is one of the main points of the camp that I personally love. Now, if we head on here inside, you'll notice obviously up front we have the prominent double door. Um, after I get done showing the interiors and you know letting you guys know about the little things I've done inside, I'm going to head over to Wade Airport and show you guys a few of these different methods so you can do them yourselves. But you know, as you can see, the double door is such a wonderful. Um, feature design in any camp specifically um, for having a bit more prominence in the entrance and I just love it. Now similarly to my other build which is also on my um, channel I um, have these blueprinted wavy willard columns that are in a manner of a bit more uh, curve to them rather than just being a uh, you know square design and I think these are just cool little added features you can have for your camps that also make it you know you know wow like that's a very cool looking wavy willard wall and something you don't see too often and I again like I said I will show you guys how I approached this and you know if you have any easier ways or ideas or different things I want you guys to comment down below and let me know on what you think and also what ideas you might have so now with a lot in this camp, you can see here I have these um, candles merged down into a bookshelf. And that, you know, was simply taken out of uh, out of an idea from one of my buddies, uh, Roadkill You, who, uh, you know, had the great idea for the angel. But, um, you know, they gave us these ritual um, candles and they put them, in, they, they decided to put them in a filing cabinet. Now, whoever thought of putting them in a filing cabinet was not, you know, the brightest in terms of uh, design. So I thought this was a um, wonderful design that I had seen from uh, Roadkill and I, you know, wanted to put it in here as well. Um, 
because of the chapel I have and I thought that this was just a beautiful added feature for the entire camp. Now one of my favorite points of the entire camp is actually this bookshelf and as you can see I have a bit of a you know how I had turned this last one to make it a bit of a curve as well because I wanted to add the effect of this uh, bench being merged inside of it to make it kind of seem as you know oh if I did have that ladder and I could move it it would curve a bit at the end which I think is such a cool idea and it also gets rid of that little uh, gap right there which is not a terrible issue because I have one right there but right here I thought that this was a cool cool idea and um, which leads into this uh, secret room that you can see from the exterior. And now the way I approach the secret room, again, props to Roadkill for uh, coming up with this idea or, you know, um, I had seen from him and his camps. Um, so it, this is pretty simple. All you have to do is take whatever you want, you know, hidden wise, because you can see I have a door frame in the back. Um, you can merge it down a bit further onto a spike board. And when you activate the spike board, you know, it, it will break this, but simply just allow you to enter any secret, you know, room you might want to have. And again, naked man. But um, I, I think it's just so, so cool to add that, you know, just little bit of coolness to your, the entire camp. And I thought, you know, having a, a secret, like, torture-esque area would be a really cool um, for this camp. So, and all you got to simply do is repair and boom just good as new and now what I also love in this camp is these curtains and these curtains you know I don't know if you guys know how easy that these are to use but you can simply raise something off of the ground um, and I not I don't mean in a floating manner but just you know stack a few stash boxes or whatever might you know hold these you can actually place these anywhere and get rid of them and they float so I thought that was also a very cool thing that was pretty simple to do that kind of broke up the the empty space that was in the um, you know the, the the higher part of the ceiling so I thought you know man that was such a good easy feature to add now if we make our way here to the chapel this wasn't you know too terribly difficult obviously it was just you know setting an array of benches down and um, the cross, the cross I love. I love this cross so much. It is actually two coffins merged down to make that crossbar. And this is um, Western bar set for the um, long part of it. And you know, this was, you know, just two merged down. Again, pretty simple to do. And like I said, I will show you guys on how to do all those things or go over those really pretty, uh, pretty quickly. But I thought, you know, all of these just little features, including this, you know, little um, table merge down, I wanted to have the lip effect on the, um, not altar, but I guess wherever, the pa whatever you'd call where the pasture stands, I thought that was a pretty good feature rather than just having this, you know, plain looking bookshelf. But, you know, this this mer merging, guys, is, is you're going to be your key to um, opening up new doors and new different effects and it's just super super simple and I'm like I said I'm gonna show you guys on how to do that now if we make our way down into the spire this room wasn't too terribly difficult um, yes pretty thought out because I didn't know what I really wanted to do when I had it and this was actually one of the last areas I went over but I wanted to get it done so I could you know make sure I had enough budget so you know, you'll see a mirror within this um, wine display, and that simply just was able to be put in there. If I can show you guys how easy it is, I literally was just able to slide it in, and I thought that kind of was also kind of cool to break up, not just the back part of it being completely, you know, a, uh, ugly wood, in my opinion. I thought that, you know, having a mirror in there and also having, you know, Nuka Shine in there was a pretty cool feature and uh, kind of gave a little bit of coolness to this entire... Uh, little room down here and this was pretty pretty cool I thought as well this is actually a shelf but I have two um, butchered boar meat hanging from it and all I did was simply open up a wall and you know make it a doorway obviously I'd gotten rid of the vines but I was very easily able to place this and then you know just make the replacement of the wall and or you know the doorway into a regular wall and you know it goes in there pretty easily and it looks really really cool um, here with this stove, I actually merged it down onto a campfire because I wanted to have the added effect of light, 
but also the wood sound crackling and fire coming in from the bottom of it as if it was you know being in use so that was also I thought a really cool thing and I loved how that came out and I really like how this bottom part of this room came out now these here are the same that I had used for the ladder on the outside but these are just benches placed on top of each other and you know how simply it can be done um, to do that. Now, I had added this shelf recently because I noticed players without um, jetpacks weren't able to get up here. And, you know, I was thinking spiral staircase first when I had, you know, done this build, but then I was like, well, this, the spiral is either too tight or too wide, and, you know, I didn't want to go through all the trouble and budget of using maybe rocks or different types of uh, tables that would take up a lot more budget rather than just placing these benches on each other. So I thought this idea of having just a ladder was a really cool idea and it you know led up to the you know uh, I guess pastures room or whatever room you like to call it but I thought you know this room was also very very cool just you know just a little you know hideaway almost and this feature right here with the paintings these were just simply you know placed right against the wall super super simple to do you can literally just take it and look at it um, it won't let me hear, but you know, that actually is normally green and it allows you to place on the wall pretty easily, but it kind of just looks as if you have paintings just kind of stowed away in the corner. And um, you know, I thought this room also was a very, very cool touch. But yeah, guys, I would like to show you a lot on um, how to do a little of these, you know, little knickknacks and things, this, this roof especially. These underpinnings are very easy to do as well. All you really have to do is get a catwalk, attach it to a foundation, and then these are pretty placeable. And if you're ever having issues with placing underpinnings on your camps, um, a lot of the time it's easier to just go underground and approach it from the bottom and looking up rather than just being on top because a lot of times these can be super difficult now if you do run into the um, issue of it saying it's intersecting with an object let's say you're trying to build on rocks and these are kind of jagged and don't allow you to place that I do not know how to work around and if you guys do I would love to hear on how to do that uh, let's head over to Wade Airport so I can show you guys a few of these little tricks, knickknacks, and my knows and what to do's and what to don'ts when approaching a camp. So everybody, we are here at Wade Airport and I came to this workshop specifically for all this space so I could show you guys, showcase all the little blueprints I have and how to approach building them. And I think I want to start with the coolest method and you know, look in my opinion in this game is you know actually very very simple and um, I want to show you guys how easy it can be and how you can do it yourself so what you want to start off with is two foundations now you're gonna have one foundation that is going to be one height the whole time that you're not even going to look at or mess with and I mean not look at it I literally mean not look at it at all and now you want to take your wavy willard or whatever you really want onto this foundation. And the coolest thing with these wavy willards, I'm not gonna do it perfectly here, I just wanna show you guys how you can approach it yourselves, but the coolest thing about these wavy willards is that actually the bottom of these um, columns are what, and I'm using the secret door, the bottom of those columns is actually what is the anchor for the entire, um, the entire stone wall. And so using this foundation merge it, it's super super simple to approach the um, a-frame um, design that I have in the front of my castle and so simply you want to have two foundations and like I said with whatever you want on top of the foundation going up you're gonna look here you're gonna go in camera mode you're gonna be at the back left or back right um, of the foundation that is in front of the one that is behind you you're going to click X into a manner that it'll allow you to see blue as you've clicked X. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold down X, you're gonna click L1, and you can go up as you know high or low as you want. Now don't go too high with this foundation because you're going to um, raise it too far eventually and it won't snap back into this. So simply what this is doing is the game's thinking that when you are moving this foundation up, not too terribly high, it's coming back down onto this foundation and in turn raising this. Now one thing you have to take into account when doing this uh, foundation merge, that's the anchor to everything that you have merged up. So you're going to have to use the foundation meticulously to how you want things floated in the air. And like I said, the coolest thing about these 
walls is look you can place them right in each other just the same way I did over at my castle you can make a you know an A you can make you know I guess there's all a few crazy different th types of things you know I'm not gonna do it perfectly here but I just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to approach this and to make a cool wavy willard uh, roof now, also something I wanted to show you guys, the Anywhere wall. I showed it on my last um, video, but I just wanted to show you guys, and maybe you can recreate it. I actually got this from a buddy of mine, so I did not make this. But let me tell you, this Anywhere wall blueprint is one of the most helpful things in the game because you can quite literally place it anywhere. And so this blueprint itself incorporates one conduit, short, two mats of any kind, a door frame, and a door. And obviously you can just simply get rid of the door. You can, you know, replace that to a wall. And it's actually super cool because look, you can have a floating wall. And you know, this can be used for, you know, putting walls in areas that you might not have a foundation. And, um, you know, even if you don't have foundations down, this blueprint still works. And so you can use them for your benefit when having no foundations. Another one of my favorite blueprints is the double door. Now the double door blueprint incorporates two of each of the following. Two foundations, two doorways, and two doors. And now this, like I said, this blueprint is just so amazing and so easy to use. And let me give you guys a overhead shot just in case you want to try and recreate it yourself. But it's pretty simple. Pretty straightforward, like I said, it's just two of each, but what you simply do is you, you know, click on both of the doors. You can replace them with uh, most doors. Now, some of the doors open differently than they close rather than these being very, very similar. And all you have to do is open one of them. You can replace both of these with regular walls. Get rid of the foundations. And one is going to be closed and you can open it one is going to be closed and you can open it or, or close it I apologize it's but you know in the manner of a double door if you want them opening you know inward you can do that or you can simply turn that blueprint around and have doors that open outward and that blueprint like I said is one of the coolest and easiest to use for a double door and I think that double door adds lots of prominence to the front of any camp or at home and you know, I know a lot of you may know, but if you don't, I just want to go over it so I can show you guys on how easy it may be if you don't know. But you know, with the merging in this game, it's super, super simple. And actually you can use the crafting car Tinker's Workbench. I didn't know that, but it actually acts like a camp module if you have somebody on it as well. So you can merge things up or down using that. And so that is also a very helpful thing. Obviously, I'm not on my camp, so I can't show you the module specifically. But I want to show you guys how to merge things down into each other. Now, all you have to do is simply take a power connector pressure plate. You can click X, click on it again, place it back down, and it's going to be activated. So instead of having to use a um, mannequin or have somebody stand in it or on, you know, stand on it yourself, you can simply just pick it up, put it back down, and it will be activated for you. Now, with this, you can literally use anything and put it into another thing. It's super, super awesome. For instance, here I have this stash box. I can use this straw goat just so I can show you guys how easy it is. But look, you click X. And so the game actually gives you about, you know, a half inch on the merge itself, or half inch, maybe an inch itself. But as you can see, look, all you have to do is repeat the steps of just placing and picking up and placing and you can merge it down you know either all the way or halfway itself but you have to keep in mind when merging things if the bottom of whatever you're merging sticks too far out of the anchor uh, I guess object itself it will give you troubles when placing so you have to keep that in mind and you know be aware of not being put or not putting things in down too far when merging things down now, I want to also show you guys using the um, Wavy Willard columns that I have, this one especially. I also got this idea from uh, Paiyu, one of the best builders in this game, and I kid you not, he is a mastermind when it comes to building in this game. But I wanted to show you guys how you could approach and making one of these your own. Now, you have to make, you have to, you know, take into account when doing this blueprint, 
you cannot move it. It's stationary. Wherever you place it, it has to be there. And I think the easiest way to place things and approach placing things rather than trying to, you know, oh, okay, let me see if I can, you know, line this up right. It's always going to be a bit crooked. Obviously, I could have taken a bit more time to put more detail into it. But I think the easiest thing and a lot of people that forget is simply just going into camera mode and pushing this down right, you know, as closest to the ground as you can get your camera. You can click X and click X again. It's going to be placed right on top of each other perfectly, and you're not going to have any issues. But yeah, let me show you guys how I approached making this blueprint itself and how you guys can make it yourself. So what I did to approach that blueprint, because I had seen it on one of Paiyu's camps, and I was like, I got to recreate that for my own. And um, I you know, thought, I was like, how the hell would somebody approach that? Now, using the Wavy Willard wall itself, you can obviously snap in a column. Now, when taking that into account, I guess you could probably use this when the column is down, just so you can see how you might want to, um, you know, make the other column itself. But you have to take into account that these snap, and these snap very easily. So when you actually can get rid of both of them and break them, you can break you can get rid of the long keep that break it when it's broken you can snap it back into it now obviously I could have done that so much better and I apologize on how that came out but that's how I approach that build and you know how easy it can be with putting other columns inside of each other which is you know very difficult but it's a very very simple process I want you guys to play around with it you know what I mean and um, maybe you might find something that I hadn't showcased in here or some you know really cool blueprint that you may be able to use with the wavy willers but the wavy willers guys they are the best when it comes to experimenting and having custom um, designs and pillars within your camp now another blueprint I want to show you guys and I'll also tell you what's you know incorporated in it and how easy it is to use um, is the anywhere stair now I hadn't used this recently on any of my camps but I just want to show you guys how easy it can be to place a stair literally anywhere okay well so um, you, you want to use a, a rug or a mat a staircase and a catwalk the catwalk let me tell you guys just as the wavy willer said the catwalk is one of the most useful items in this game and this, like I said, incorporates just one of each, which is just a stair, rug, and catwalk. But this blueprint allows you to place stairs anywhere. I mean, literally anywhere. You can, you can place them. Look, I can do this all day long. You can literally place them wherever the hell you want. So that's also a very, very cool feature, allowing you to really just do whatever the hell you want, which this game sometimes doesn't give you the freedom to do. So another thing I want to show you using the catwalks is the underpinnings that I use on my camps. And you know, I see a lot of people using these because they are just amazing and they cover this ugly foundation, um, ugly concrete. So utilizing the catwalks, you can simply snap them to any foundation pretty easily. And as you can see here, there's nothing that will allow me to place a half wall to cover that up, but using the catwalks, will allow you to place any half or full wall. And like I said, if you're having issues with the full wall, I suggest just going underground and starting from the bottom while looking up. That always helps me out. But you have to take into account when you have these half walls there, even when you have a full wall above it, it won't allow you to get rid of that full wall. So if you're ever running to that issue and you wanna get rid of a wall there, I would say make these, um, if you do, and I will test it also without. But if you have the army base, I would suggest simply just taking a flamethrower trap and breaking that half wall on the bottom, which will then in turn allow you to break the regular wall. Now, I guess, let me see while I'm here, if it works with any wall. Let me use just a red barn, take that flamethrower, Break that half. I'm gonna repair this just to see. So yeah, so breaking any half wall will actually allow you to break the wall above it when it's an underpinning. And 
you know like i said these underpinnings add so much to all your camps if you're trying to get rid or hide these foundations so use that to your um benefit but yeah i hope you guys um enjoyed and you know got a few of these ideas utilizing some of the different techniques within this game once more everybody thank you for being a part of this video your presence means a lot i genuinely hope you found value and enjoyment as you embark on your own camp adventures, may the ideas and techniques shared here serve as a guiding light, helping you create truly exemplary experiences. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss a future camp building exploration update. Until next time, happy camping.